Hello and welcome. I'm your instructor, uh, Professor Steve Wallen, and this is homework help on chapter one for economics. Okay, so economics 1010. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have. Right here we have your chapter quiz. You can get ready to take that. You got your challenge of economics. LS stands for learn smart. In order to get credit, do the questions on the bottom left of it. If you're not doing questions, you're not getting credit. All right here's homework problems. Let's go ahead and take a look at these homework problems. Let's work on them. Remember this, as we work through homework problems, a lot of them are algorithmic. You'll be the ex it'll be the exact same question, but it'll change the numbers. Okay, let's take a look. Remember, you have unlimited attempts on this. You just keep working it till you get it. All right. Ooh, what do we have here? Iceland PPC. What does PPC stand for? Give you a little, little time. It's a production possibility curve, okay? If you look at this curve over here, that's everything I could possibly be producing, okay? So let's go ahead and take a look at what points it's given us. We have point A over here. At point A, it says output of consumer goods. That means we're producing all consumer goods. Over here, they got point C, okay? What can we see about point C? Well, if I'm producing at D and E, I meet at C, so that's a combination, okay? It's a combination of goods. X is also a combination of goods, okay? I'm producing F and G here, and I get to this point on the curve, and over here, I'm going straight military goods, okay? So straight military on this side, straight consumer on this side, and here we have two mixes. Let's see what the questions are that they actually have for us. All right, let's take a look and see what these questions are. Oh, let me clear that off. There we go, okay. So at what point in, in, in the figure is Iceland producing? Okay, it's so right here, this is very clear. It's telling us what to look for. Iceland has no military. If Iceland has no military, are they gonna be here at point B? Does point B make sense? No, that means they're full military. That's not gonna work out. What about at G over here? Are they producing military? Yeah, they're producing all the way out to G, so that's not gonna make sense. E, does that make sense? No, that's still producing military. What about right here? Are they producing any military? No, they're producing only consumer goods. So at what point in the figure is Iceland producing? If they have no military, A is your only option. Let's go ahead and select A, shall we? Come over here. A, it's gonna give you a little drop down box. Now, let's go ahead and clear this stuff out. Iceland decided to produce the quantity OE of military goods. So that's producing from here to here on military goods, O to E. How much consumer output would it have to give up? Well, let's take a look at that, okay? So right now it's producing at A, right? It's producing at, this is what it's currently producing. However, if it wants to produce OE, it's going to produce here, where is it going to have to drop down to once it hits here? It's going to have to miss this section here, okay? In other words, I have to give something up. This is a trade-off, okay? But I just can't magically produce more military goods. If I'm producing at the max I already can possibly produce, something has to give. Well, in this case, if I produce OE, by default, I have to go down from A to D, that's what I'm giving up. So I'm losing A to D as far as consumer goods, but I'm now producing O and E, okay? All the way through there. So how much consumer output would it have to give up? Well, this is what's interesting. It's not giving me numbers. So what would I look to put in here? If it's not giving me numbers, I'd literally just put in A to D. That's literally what I'm giving up. So let's see if we can find that, shall we? Scroll down here. Uh, do, do, do. A to D. Now, once you have this, always check your work. Remember, you can check your work as many times as you want. If you ever get frustrated, just do the best you can. Go through the entire homework assignment and then start looking at some of the solutions and they'll tell you exactly what you were getting wrong. Check your work's just sort of an, an interim check. But remember, you can go through the entire assignment, turn that in and then get full solutions and then go through and redo it again, okay? Because the main point is I want you to learn on this stuff. Go through, learn it, figure it out. 
All right, ready for check my work? Let's see what happens. I'm gonna check my work right there. That kind of lines up pretty close there and it's saying the answer is correct. So we did it, we did it right, we did it good. All right, let's move on to the next one, shall we? Okay, remember, if you ever wanna turn in the entire thing, right here's your submit, okay? Once you submit it, it'll go through and look at it and then you can go back into it and redo the assignment if you didn't get 100, okay? Keep working on homework till you get it right. That's the key. Let's go on to question two. You can either click on that or just go down there. Use the information listed in the table to calculate the opportunity cost of increasing missile production, then graph the, we have to do our own graph up here, the, the production possibility curve. Calculate the opportunity cost based on the following information. So this is the information they're giving. They're giving us a little table. We see missiles go from zero to 50, to 100, to 150, to 200, 250. And houses, as we go along here, if we have 100 houses and we give up 10 houses, how much do we get on missiles? We get 50 missiles. If I give up a little bit more on houses, I go from 90 to 75, so I'm giving up 15, so I have to give up a little bit more houses at this point, and then I get 100. Here, I'm actually giving up 20 houses, so we're gonna, let's go ahead and start marking out and see what we have going on here. Always look at relationships whenever you're looking at a possibility production curve, okay? Let's go ahead and go into here. Let's give us a little marker out. Uh, make this a bit skinnier. There we go. So here, what's the difference between zero and 50? 50, okay. What about here? 50 and 100, what's the difference? 50, okay, we're starting to get that relationship going. What's gonna be the change here, 100 to 50? 50 again, so I'm just looking at the difference between the numbers, 50. This is the easiest way to start understanding what's going on here on this uh, table. And then 50. All right, don't those 50s look amazing? That's what you get when I have to draw with a mouse. <laughs> All right, houses though, it's a bit different. Like I said before, it's a bit different. Let's go ahead and let's draw out the difference. Here we're gonna have 10 is the change. Here, what's the change? 15, 75 to 55 is 20. 55 to 30 is what? Yeah, you guys probably got that, 25. 30. All right, so what can we see here? The first time we convert some of our missiles into houses, it's fairly efficient. However, each time we go, we're kind of losing some efficiency to do that, okay? So we have to really make sure we want houses because we're kind of losing a lot of the efficiency as we go down on this. So let's plug this in, shall we? Opportunity cost of increasing missile production by 50. So I'm increasing missiles by 50. What am I giving up? Well, by default, if missiles are going up, then I'm going to lose houses. So I go over here, it's gonna give me an option, houses. If it ever is a little bit messed up on the drop-down box, use your will and scroll down. Because sometimes it won't show you everything unless you use the will on the mouse, okay? Then, what would I put down? 10. What about here? What's the difference here? Well, if I increase it by 50, so I go 50 to 100, what am I losing on houses? 15 houses. And note, what's it stay down here? What's it still gonna be? Houses. It hasn't changed, I'm still losing houses. This one, what's the difference? 20. And what am I losing? More houses. 25 here. I'm losing more houses. Last one. I'm going from 200 to 250. All right. I lose how many houses? I lose 30 houses. That's all they're asking for in this question. That's it. And like I said before, if we want to quickly check our answer, what should we do? Go down here. You can check it mid-check. You can check it any time you want. You can go through and check your answer. Okay, so let's just go over here and let's say I'm not even doing any of the rest. I just want to check my, I want to see what little part I did is correct. What's it going to give me? All check marks. We did that correct. 
And then for anything I didn't do, is it gonna give me tell me I did it right? No. So if you want, you can just do part of it and find out if you at least got that part right, rather, rather than doing the everything and seeing if you wasted your time. Let's go ahead and get rid of everything here, shall we? Boop, 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 boop. Oh, we'll just clear it real fast. There we go. So now we gotta do a production possibility curve. I'm gonna warn you up front. These graphs are very tricky. Do not double click, triple click, click and draw and stuff like that. It just, it, it has issues, okay? Just click once where you're supposed to click and pay attention when you do it. All right, it doesn't, it doesn't like to have you constantly mess with it. So first one, we have zero to 100. So houses, 100, how many missiles will we have? Zero. Oh, we gotta click over here though first. We don't click on that, will it let us do it? No. None, it'll let us do it. And it'll automatically draw the line for you. Next one is 50 to 90, so I go down to 90. And now I'm producing how much? 50. You gotta kinda eyeball this. And also to double check it, just put your cursor on top of the point and it will tell you 50, 90. So if, you want, if you're wondering if you actually put the point in the right place, that's where it is, okay? That, that, then you can double check to see if you did it right. Um, next, 100 to 75. Okay, so now we're going down to 75 and then we're at 100. And that's correct there. 150 to 55. You go to 55 and 150. Yep, and that's showing correct on the point. Always read the numbers. Just read the numbers as you go. And then 200 to 30. So we go here to 30. And what, what you can tell is it's kind of dropping very steeply here. We have a steep drop. And then finally, 250. This one's pretty easy. You're just going straight to the edge of the line. So if you look here, is this possibility production curve even? No, it has a steep drop, meaning you're getting some inefficiencies as you go down this other side, okay? So the first time you trade in some uh, houses for missiles, you're getting a pretty good deal. Second time, good deal, but you're losing a little bit of efficiency until finally it's costing you a lot to get those last little missiles. Like if you look at from E to F here, you're giving up 30 houses just to get 50 missiles. Meanwhile, on this first drop, you only had to give up 10 to get 50 missiles. So you can see the change in efficiency get drawn out there. All right, and let's check my work, shall we? I make mistakes, so even I check my work. But guess what? Scores 100%, we're looking good, looking good. All right, let's move on, shall we? Also, whenever you're doing a quiz or test, check your own work, because this thing won't be here to do it for you. <laughs> so. By all means, double check your work. Number three. Ooh, here we go. Assume that it takes four hours of labor. Oh, it looks like we got some math involved. Time to paint a room and two hours to sand a floor. So let's go ahead and, and write this out so we know what we're dealing with. So we got, uh, let's start with my, let's start with the magenta they give us. So four hours equals Labor of time to paint room. So that's gonna be painting a room. I'm gonna put PR. Usually I just put P, but I put PR just because it makes, gives a little bit more information. Because sometimes people try and, try and figure out what's P, does P stand for? I'm like, all right, PR, paint room. And then two hours to sand floor. So two hours equals sand floor. You could abbreviate it just to S, but I'll just do SF. That way people don't get confused. Um. How many rooms could be painted by one worker? Okay, so it says right here, if all 24 hours were spent painting, okay, do the math, 24, divided by what, what would we do? How many rooms could be painted by one worker? Think about this. Six times what equals 24? Six times four, so you just go in here, And we'll do six, okay? Decision were made to sand two floors, how many painted rooms would have to be given up, okay? Well, you sand two floors, that's gonna be two hours gone, two hours gone, that's gonna be four hours gone, that's gonna cost you one of your painted rooms, okay? Because basically, you can do two sand floors for every painted room, if you're doing two sanded floors, you're now gonna be down to five on the painted rooms. Let's go ahead and put that in. 
And guess what we just basically did? We did a relationship which can be plotted as a production possibility curve. Illustrate with a production possibility curve. So then we have to come down here. Standard floor, numbers per day. Okay, and right here it's gonna tell you how many points you have to plot. Okay, so if we go all here, all on rooms painted, what's the max we could do? Max we could do, and this is if 24 hours were spent painting, we could do six, right? Do six of it. Then we give up four of those hours. We can do how many on the sanded floors? You go there. And then you're gonna keep seeing this go on. You notice the efficiency should be the same on this as we go down. Because each time we're losing a, a painted room but gaining two sanded floors until finally one, two, three, four, five, six. And they said, how many would we have? Seven. I think we just really did a possibility curve. And the thing to notice, what about this one? We saw one that was sort of efficient earlier, the Iceland one, okay? That had more of a bubble to it. The other one was sort of a drop down mountain was the last one. And this one is just flat. So when you look at these possibility curves, they're gonna have different shapes. And that's gonna affect what would be the best mix for your decision economically as far as what you want to do, okay? Are you guys ready to check it? See if we did it right? So remember, all we're doing is saying for each step, what am I giving up? If, you, if I look over this line again, I can do full, to paint six full rooms, or I can give up one room, which would give me four hours. For four hours, I could do two of the sanded floors, and each time I give up a room, I can do add another two of the sanded floors. And I get that. All right, let's go and check my work, shall we? Moment of truth. Did we do it right? Did we do it right? Oh, look at this. We didn't do it right. I'll see if any of you guys caught this one. The decision were made to sand two floors. How many painted rooms would have to be given up? Oh, so guess what I did on this one? Did I, did I, did I interpret the question correctly? No. I didn't interpret the question correctly. I was reading it like I would the graph, right? But what did it actually ask for on this? Okay. And you'll see this as I go through the homework helps. I'll intentionally make mistakes because these are the most common that I see. If a decision were made to sand two floors, how many painted rooms would have to be given up? You only have to give up how many rooms? One. How many of you caught that? Okay. Be, be aware, every so often I'll slip some of those in to see if you guys catch it. Check my work. There we go. So make sure to always read the question fully. That is where most people get economics wrong. They'll understand the theory, they'll understand the math even, but they'll misinterpret the question. Read the question. If a decision were made to sand two floors, how many painted rooms would have to be given up? Here, as we can see, I'm only giving up one painted room as I go from six to five. They're not asking me, where would I now be? Does that make sense for everybody? I'm pretty sneaky on that stuff. Every so often, I'll do one of those for you. Let's go to question four. Suppose that it takes two hours of labor time to paint a room and two hours to sand a floor. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our information that we know. Suppose that it takes two hours later labor time to paint a room. So this one takes two for painting a room. PR, you can also just put it as P. There we go. And look at this, two hours of labor time to paint a room and two hours to sand a floor. What are we seeing here? Are these pretty equal? You can do S or SF, either one you want. If two workers each spend 20 hours painting, now this is where they get you tri tri tricky on you, okay? They start messing with the total you're working with. Last total we worked with was 24 hours, right? 24 hour day. This one they're using two workers times 20 hours. So in other words, how many total man hours do we really have? Well, we go two times 
20 equals what? 40 total man hours, okay? And if they adjust the amount of hours each worker does or the amount of workers, we could address this equation, but that's our total hours we're dealing with is 40, okay? How many rooms could be painted by both workers? What do you guys think? Take some time. We have 40 total hours. It takes two hours to paint a room. Most of you guys probably already have that. They should be able to do 20 rooms. The decision were made to only sand floors, how many floors could be sanded? Well, we have two here, 40 total, 20. Should we check our work? Let's check our work, shall we? Answer is correct. So in other words, if we were looking at this, and this was the production possibility curve, it'd be like putting the dot on both the X and Y axis at the very max, as far as rooms painted and, and uh, floor sanded. That's what they did on that question. All right, next one. Question five. We'll get rid of all that. Clear the screen. The table below describes the production possibilities Confronting an economy. Calculate the opportunity cost of building hospitals. Ooh, to ruin a hospital one. Graph or production possibility curve. That's what PPC stands for. And answer two questions about production possibilities. Calculate the opportunity cost of building hospitals. Okay. So they give us the first one. They're just saying you're starting on A, which means you have 12 homeless shelters. And how many hospitals do you get? You don't get any. You get zero hospitals for that. But if you move a little bit out and do a mix, things change okay if you give up how many homeless shelters are we giving up how many hospitals get so let's go ahead and go back to and this is a good practice to always do this whenever you're you're dealing with these type of things 12 to 10 what's the difference 2 10 to 7 what's the difference 3 7 to 4 what's the difference still 3 okay 4 to 0 though Four. Okay, so we, what do we see? A little bit of a inefficiency. We're gonna have them giving up more per hospital. And here, the thing that's nice, how much does it change on each one of these? One. So I mean, you really don't have to do the, the difference between because it's always gonna be one, 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 one. So that's our relationship. We can, so we can kind of already, before even graphing this, what shape do you think the production possibility curve is gonna have? Okay, first we give up two. Then we give up three, then we give up three, and then we give up four. Visualize it, think about it, okay? Might be similar to one we already did just barely. You'll see it as, as we pull it up. So what's going on here? Okay, calculate the opportunity cost of hospitals, okay? So the cost is if I get one hospital, I'm giving up what? I'm giving up two of what? Two homeless shelters. So for every hospital I gain, I'm giving up two homeless shelters. And the one thing that you can do, rather than going through and doing your entire assignment and then getting it wrong, do the first one and just go check it. So let's go practice this, okay? Let's go check my work. Did I do the first one correctly? This is a good practice to get into. Yes, so if I keep doing that, am I gonna get the others correctly? Yes, the other one should be correct. I should get the other ones to be correct. All right, let's go here. What am I giving up? Three. And have we changed what we're giving up? No, it's gonna still be homeless shelters. And that's gonna be three, still homeless shelters. We're gonna go into four. And then homeless shelters, all right. There we go. Let's clear off all that junk. Clear the screen. Let's take a look and see what we got over here, shall we? <laughs> Production possibility curve. Let's see. So now we gotta plot them. So we just go up here. And they'll tell you plot five points. What's A? 12 and zero, always click this first, so it's actually gonna let you plot it. 
12 and 0. If you leave your cursor on it, it should give you the coordinates. That one, for some reason, it's not giving me the coordinates right now. We'll see what it does it in a bit. And then we have 10 and 1. Oh, not showing me the coordinates. Should be glitched. Uh, 7 and 2. Or else it's so apparent that it's not giving me the, the, the coordinates, so they think that you can just eyeball it. And then 4, 3. And then what's the last one? 0, 4. So for those of you that thought the curb would look like a super fast mountain downgrade, yep, that's because of the inefficiencies as you go down the curb. So, all right. And as best practice, what should you always do? Just double check it before you move on. Check my work. Takes two seconds. Might affect the rest of your other questions. It's giving us 100%. We're looking good there. All right. Why can't more of both outputs be produced? Oh, this is a good question. Why can't more of both outputs be produced? Why can't we just have more hospitals or have more of the, of the homeless shelters? Let's read through. Our resources are limited and therefore not capable of producing everything we want. Sounds plausible, doesn't it? Hospitals are more expensive than homeless shelters. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one's more expensive. You still have limitations. Um, political process creates a situation where more of both is impossible. Um, technically, you could have a political situation where you have a, po a production possibility curve and the government's so inefficient that that gets downgraded. But it isn't going to really change about why can't more of both be produced. Because you should be, be able to do well regardless to a degree. Um, market mechanism creates a situation where more of both is impossible. I don't think the market really matters in this one, does it? What do you guys think? What do you guys think is going on? A, B, C, or D. Take your time. Think about it. Does politics always get in the way of us producing more of what we want? No. And even then, all the politics would do, would, would they just set that curve. That's all it would do if there was an issue with that. They were just taxing a lot, a lot of the people. How many of you guys chose this? Our resources are limited and therefore not capable of producing everything we want. Does that sound like an economic theory right there where we have to trade off? Isn't this entire curve just trade-offs? And then, what do we got down here? Yep. And look over here, it says, answer is not complete, meaning we didn't do this one. It's not saying that this one's wrong, it's saying we didn't finish the last one, okay? So, hospitals being more expensive has nothing to do with the curve. It doesn't change the actual curve as far as the curve going in or going out, as far as the production possible. And yes, you can shift that curve, okay? Um, why can't more of both be produced? Because you're gonna always be somewhere on that line, okay? It's called trade-offs. This curve, even if I bring it in or push it out, I'm still gonna have trade-offs as I move on the curve. And that's what this is really talking about as far as economics. I can choose how to allocate my resources, but I just don't magically have new resources. And if I do, it pushes the curve either out or in, depending on if I get more resources or reduction resources, at which point I'm still making a choice between what I want. Okay, and that's the main core of what they're looking for. Not capable of producing everything we want. If I want to produce max homeless shelters, that's going to eat into resources I could be spending on hospitals. That's what they're looking for. Which output combination is the most desired one? Ooh, now this is what's interesting. If I was to look for the most efficient, what would be the most efficient one? This is different than desired. Most efficient would be what? Well, probably up here, right? be most efficient the problem though is, is we don't know how valuable each one of these is to society how valuable is each homeless shelter how valuable is each hospital i mean what if there's an epidemic going on and we need to max out hospitals before everyone gets eradicated on earth okay or what if the homeless are rioting and destroying the city maybe we need to shift more resources to homeless shelters <laughs> so is there what, really one right answer here? Well, as far as the information we have, 
just know. We don't have the information. We don't know how valuable each hospital and homeless shelter is to this current society. If they told us and said, hey, each hospital is worth this many satisfaction points and each homeless shelter is worth this many satisfaction points, we could calculate what they would want to do. We could, we, could do, we could do a max benefit analysis for them. And even that benefit analysis, we'd go in and do other math where basically it's sliding benefits where as you get more of one thing, it becomes less useful to you. Sort of like if you have one donut, it's pretty good. But if you have like 50 of the donuts, you get sick. And we could go into all of that sort of economic analysis. As is though, depends on the value judgments of society. And what do we do? Check my work. Hopefully nothing's changed as far as our other correct ones. As we can see, that is correct. Okay. Remember it says, which output combination is most desired? It's not asking for most efficient. Which one is the most desired one? And also with efficiency, you have to put a value on homeless shelters versus hospitals in order to even figure that out. So you get a complete efficiency report. But that's all the questions. Every chapter, there's gonna be five questions. Go through it like that, use the checks. And like I said, if you don't, even with using your check, your work, if you still don't get your answer, go submit it over here and it will give you full solutions, okay? You can go over here and do a full on submit. You have unlimited submits, not just check your works, but submits over here, get full solutions. So let's go ahead and go through this process, shall we? I submit it. Are you sure you want to submit this for grading? Click submit. Don't be afraid with that. I give you unlimited on this one, okay? This is homework, I guess it's there for you to learn. And look what it gives me when I'm done. It shows the correct answer. And it goes through, yep, correct answer. I can go on for the next one. Okay. It'll show me pretty much everything I need to know on that. I can click on this, it'll give me more information. Some of these are more helpful than others. They're just kind of giving you some more graphs of the production possibility curve and kind of figuring stuff out that way. And yeah, that's it. So, do you have any other questions? We can always discuss those in class. It's been good working with everybody. And hopefully you guys do well in the course, okay? Um, this is Steve Wallen, your professor. Take care, everybody.